Good morning and welcome back to the basement. So a little quick tip this morning. I am creating larger graduated dials for this lathe and then I'm gonna be graduating this uh, giving it a hundred you know marks around the perimeter. So I need to index it a hundred times and what I'm about to do is take this piece of paper and measure the precise circumference of this chuck. And once I know the exact circumference of the chuck. Then from there, I can use a piece of high tech that I have that you may very well have at your house too, which is a modern computer printer. So once I know its precise circumference, then I can simply go to my CAD program and divide this distance by 100 and just print out a series of lines on my printer that are that distance apart. Of course these are the length of printer paper so I'll have to print two or three series of lines and then tape them over top of one another. Tape that onto the chuck. Build some kind of a little sheet metal pointer. I'll probably attach it to this screw and perhaps that screw so that I have a pointer pointing right here and then I can just click the chuck through a hundred graduations just easy as can be. And of course, it's not limited to 100. It's any kind of division that you need to do. Now, if you're like me, you don't have a precision caliper or whatever that's this long. But what I do have is I have this printer's steel rule that I picked up somewhere. I lay the rule on here, very carefully lining it up at the end with the mark. It was uh, 19 point seven something. So then I overlay the caliper from the 19 mark out to the end of the paper. And the answer is 19.785. So now in my CAD program I have drawn a line that's 19.785 high and I have placed 99 division points within it. I went ahead and stretched it out to about 23 inches and I will print these out, being sure to print them at 100% scale. And here are the papers as they come out of the printer. So now I simply need to carefully cut these out, overlay them one on top of the other, and tape them in place so that it's one continuous string with these accurate index marks. And then that I will cut into an individual strip that can be taped around the chuck. By cutting these notches here, I can tell when I have a perfect overlay and that it's straight because the lines will have to line up all the way across. All right, and there I have a continuous strip of lines that's long enough to reach all the way around the circumference of the chuck and they should, when I wrap it around, they should line up. And here it is. This is the, the transition. You can see that it's lined up, well, certainly within a couple thousandths. This one, you know, is dead perfect. Uh, these two are disagreeing because this one's taking a higher perimeter than that one is. But right here, where they meet, where they actually join, they're dead on. And when you back out the error of a couple thousandths of an inch out here, down into here, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. So, I will build some kind of a pointing finger. Right, so I took this cover off and cut this piece of sheet metal. It's bent here and at the back so that it's U-shaped, which gives it some decent rigidity. It's not super flexible out here. And then I went ahead and took this uh, little bit heavier gauge flat steel and cut this out on the bandsaw. And so it's, it has a, an ear that's up under this band clamp. So it's acting as a spindle lock. You know, it's tight here, and when I tighten this, then the spindle can't move. And lastly, we're also increasing our precision of using this paper-based indexing method by use of a USB bore scope. And then over here in the laptop, we have the display from the USB microscope. So from here, you can see that that very greatly magnifies the output. So we can have a lot of confidence that we are right on the line. As you can see if I do a bump here we can easily tell the difference between right on the line 
and just near the line. And here we have the full setup. We are pulling away from the chuck. We're using this boring bar. The boring bar intentionally provides a little bit of springiness, a little bit of flexibility, so that I can push it farther in than it ought to be able to go, because I'll get a little spring here, and then drag it across, creating a scribe. You can see the bit here, the bit is very sharp. It's, you know, I have it in here at an angle where it's got plenty of rake in both directions. I have the carriage stop set to create a line that's 165 thousandths across. Measuring these lines, the shorter ones are about 165, the longer ones are about 250. And I'm more or less gonna duplicate that. So each stroke will be Come back to the stop, dial in the cross slide, stroke across. So for the procedure, we move a line using the naked eye, tap it into place using the webcam, and bring the scriber head in and do three strokes. I'm doing these at 45, 50, and 55 on the dial. So there's that line, and then move on to the next. So the carriage stop gives me nice, consistent, repeatable line length. The cross slide gives me a nice, consistent tool pressure. And the indexing printout tape gives me a nice, consistent 100 graduations. Using this setup, it does take a little longer than if I had something mechanical, like uh, Mr. Pete does where he just used a saw blade and click, click, click. And that's really fast. This is a little slower because for each line, I have to manually adjust to the line. But the cool part is it's pretty much infinitely adjustable. As long as you can print out the tape with the indexing marks that you need, then you can index any number. So that's the tip. Let me know in the comments if you have any additional input. And thanks for watching.